With Dragonflight now only being one month away, we're starting to see Blizzard really hone in on small adjustments to tuning and bug fixes. So I figured this would be the perfect time to actually give my latest impressions about some of the tanks. I wanted to walk through my second impressions of the talent trees for each of the classes and their overall performance in Mythic Plus. In this video, we're going to actually focus on the Guardian Druid. While the cries of frustration have been understandable, I don't think that this tank is in as rough as a spot as most people are making it out to be. I want to try to excite the last remaining Guardian Druid mains in this video. Obviously, with this being beta, there are still a ton of possibilities for change, so that's something that we need to keep in mind. I do plan on trying to roll out videos for each and every tank, so if that's something that interests you, feel free to subscribe. It's free, after all. If you missed my Paladin or Vengeance Demon Hunter impressions, you can find them in the description below. But with that out of the way, let's dive in. A few days ago, I did cover the latest Guardian Druid talent uh, rework, if you want to call it that. They ended up shuffling around a few of the talents, and they added some connecting nodes, and they actually split some of the choice nodes up to give us more options in our later tiers, but I'm not going to talk about that in this video. If you want to hear my impressions on those changes, I will have a cue card on screen or a link in the description below. We also recently saw health buffs across the board, and despite what some players are saying, I think this is a net po positive, oh my god, sorry for the pun, especially for the druid whose primary healing is actually percentage-based from abilities like Frenzied Regeneration or Renewal. Okay, so let's talk about the build that I've been using and having success with in Mythic Plus. The flexibility of this tree is fairly limited, but I'm going to walk through some of the optional choices once I finish up talking about what I use as a base build. The start of the tree, like most trees for any class, will actually have us taking a few abilities that we've probably been used to seeing in our kit. So in this case, we have things like Swipe and Iron Fur, but alongside that, we also have Improved Bark Skin and Verdant Heart. Though, I don't think Verdant Heart worked like this on live servers, so unless I'm on drugs, this is actually going to be a pretty minor improvement to the small damage reduction cooldown that we have access to. We are now going to sink three, three points into Killer Instinct. Man, I, I despise three-point nodes. Um, and then after this, this will leave us with our one point to spend on either Rejuvenation, which is useless in bear form, and Starfire, also useless in bear form. I've talked about this before in previous videos, but my opinion on it hasn't really changed. It feels really bad not only having three-point nodes to eat up a ton of our talent points, but also Guardian Druids specifically having to put points into these poorly reworked affinity options, which aren't really practical for us to use in Mythic Plus. In Raid, sure, whatever, I really don't mind, but in Mythic Plus, I just know that I'm randomly going to just have less points and options for my kit than other classes will. Anyways, I prefer putting points into Starfire, but that's really only because there are a few things later in the tree that I'm going to grab on the right-hand side to bolster my kit. Let's jump back over to the Guardian area of the tree and pick up some talents there. I normally grab the following. Skullmash, Thick Hide, Soothe, Stampeding Roar, and then Matted Fur. And just like a quick little side note, I really like the Absorb of Matted Fur. This was an old Azerite trait from BFA and I forgot how much I liked it. It's not overpowered, it's not anything crazy, it just adds an additional layer to our pretty stale damage reduction cooldowns. Now you'll probably notice that we have 6 points to spend. This is when we're going to branch off back to our earlier affinity choice. In this case, we're going to pick up Star Surge, Moon Conform, and then two points into Astral Influence. Now, while those previous talents really don't have much of an impact, the increased attack range is actually something that I've grown quite fond of throughout Shadowlands, and I just want to keep it going into Dragonlands. This is now when I'm going to spend my last two points on CC and Pathing. We're going to grab Typhoon for knockbacks, and then just Sunfire. One small tangent uh, I would love to see to Drew that would just be a huge quality of life is if if they made it so Ursine Adept in bear form would actually allow you to cast things like Sunfire or like Innervate. But that's probably not going to happen. This now opens up our final tier of the tree. First things first, I really like Well-Honed Instincts, and it's something that I think all Guardian Druids should cherish, but it's only good if you're taking a ton of damage consistently throughout a key. I'll talk about the options in a second. So we're going to be taking Incapacitating Roar and then one Well-Honed Instincts. I'm only going to put one point here for a reason, and the reason is, is that the second point actually provides much less value than the first point. Now, if this is something that you can potentially proc on cooldown, roughly every 90 seconds or so, you can actually sync your second point here. This might be needed in higher keys, but that's for each individual player to figure out on their own. Next, I will find myself shooting down mid, picking up Lakar's teachings, and renewal. Sadly, it's another three-point node, but there really isn't a workaround. Our last points, while not ideal, will have us plummeting right into the depths of the right side capstone area where we're going to pick up Ursal's Vortex, Innervate, and Nature's Vigil. Uh, now, before you react, this will make a lot more sense once you see the spec tree breakdown, but Nature's Vigil has roughly a 33% uptime if you smash it on cooldown, and the only build that really makes sense right now from a damage and healing standpoint is Galactic Guardian. And because of that, Nature's Vigil will see a lot of use in AoE and single target. Also, with 
buffs to Maul and more importantly Mangle, this isn't total garbage. But honestly, it's the only capstone really worth taking that will provide a consistent benefit to you and your group defensively. You'll notice that we have two points left and these are your flexible points. You can really put these anywhere you wish. For me, I typically send these points into either Nurturing Instinct for increased magical damage, and if I need more defense, I will put it into well honed Instinct Talon. You can also put a point into Heart of the Wild if you wish, or even improve Stampeding Roar if you want more consistent group movement in some of the pesky dungeons that don't allow mounts like Azure Vault or Shadow Moon Burial Grounds. Like I promised, I will also quickly go over choosing Resto Affinity instead. So backing up briefly, instead of choosing Starfire, you're going to actually pick up Rejuvenation, and the benefit to this build is that it gives you access to remove corruption, but the trade-off is that you'll no longer have access to Typhoon or Astral Influence, so users beware. You'll then put a point into Swiftmend, followed by Remove Corruption and then Natural Recovery, and then you're going to find yourself taking essentially the same path that you had before with one small catch. Without the optional branch node of Typhoon, you're going to have to spend one more point somewhere else. You can either choose to put this into Wild Charge or Tiger's Dash if you wish, but I would just put one point into Nurturing Instinct, and then you can beeline it right down for Nature's Vigil. While not an ideal tree, it's like not horrible... Uh, who am I kidding? We only get half the utility that we used to in exchange for watered down capstones that provide little use to the Guardian Druid in a Mythic Plus scenario. <clears throat> Deep breath, Nick. We aren't here to complain, we're here to present. Get it together. Anyways, let's just jump over to the Spectre. While not perfect, it's in a much better spot for Mythic Plus, and if it went live as is, well, I could live with it. But let me explain. So a quick recap of how the changes affected the tree in Mythic Plus are as follows. The choices that we wanted are now more grouped up, allowing for us to spend a few extra points into nodes that will have little to no impact on our gameplay. That might have sounded a little negative, but I'll explain here shortly. Let's lay out our tree, though. So first we're going to take Maul, Survival Instincts, Gore, Brambles, Innate Resolve, Ursan Adept, and Berserk. Now with one point left, we can either put this into Improved Mangle or Improved Survival Instincts, but now that we have a little less restriction because of the shuffling of the tree, we're actually going to be able to put points into both. This will also give us access to later tiers in the tree without having to take useless talents. This area of the tree is still a total cock blocker though, but similarly to spending time with your family on the holidays, we just need to really muscle through it. The options though here aren't bad, but we definitely want to focus on getting down to the third tier of the tree because that's where the meat of the Guardian Druid really comes into play. On the left hand side, we're going to be grabbing Flashing Claws, Earth Warden, and Unchecked Aggression. These talents are slightly flexible and will really depend on the level of keys you're doing. If you're going for low level content, you can easily work around Earth Warden or not play these talents at all. But if you did, you can also swap Earth Warden for Vicious Cycles. But that's going to have you hitting Maul a little bit more often, which is really just not great for AoE and mostly for single target. Next, we're going to shoot straight through Layered Main, Reinforced Fur, and this will give us access to both the middle and right cap zones in the third tier. To access those, we need to spend points in Fury of Nature and one point into Persistence. Now, with one point remaining, we're going to have to grab Soul of the Forest. With the recent Mangle buffs, this talent is much more attractive. Back in Shadowlands and Battle for Azeroth, this talent actually competed with uh, Incarnation. With the recent 15% buff to Mangle, increased score procs from our tier set, improved Mangle on bleeding targets, which I personally think should be baseline, Soul of the Forest now allows Mangle to be very competitive in single target. No longer are we seeing the days of thrash spamming in single target now that Ravenous Frenzy is gone, so that could be seen as a positive. In Mythic Plus, more than likely it's a sin not to play Incarnation, so we're going to be prioritizing getting that right away and getting that juicy cool introduction with Ursoc's Guidance. In order to get there though, we're going to have to pick up Circle of Life and Death, which will have synergy with a few different talents later on. Next, we're going to focus on the deep right area of the tree, picking up almost every single talent down there, including Scintillating Moonlight, Blood Frenzy, Rage of the Sleeper, Galactic Guardian, and Twin Moonfire. Oh, oh shit, I forgot Elune's Favored. We're going to grab this as well, and that's going to complete the tree. There are a lot of things to hate about this tree, this design, and the build that I'm talking about, but I'm going to I'm not going to cover that here. Instead, I want to talk about what really excites me for this class. Okay, so here we go. This is what I really like about the talents being so close together and some of their synergies. Blood Frenzy normally is the majority of our rage we generate in a key. While Guardian Druids don't use shields, we typically have some of the highest potential for armor value, and we can hit a hard armor cap of 85% physical damage reduction, making us incredibly sturdy. This in pair with Circle of Life and Death will actually bolster our Blood Frenzy rage generation by another 25%, which can provide easier potential for armor cap. 
Normally at the start of an expansion, it's really difficult for bears to get a ton of iron for stacks rolling, especially outside of Incarnation. Now we really don't need to worry about that with Circle plus Blood Frenzy. We will also have more rage generation with Soul of the Forest in single target situations since it's no longer competes with Blood Frenzy on the same node. And not to mention that we're also getting some free procs of Moonfire alongside of this, which is generating us 8 rage per proc. And in larger AoE pulls, this will happen quite frequently. Never before have I actually had an issue of expending all of my raid. Normally that would just be okay, but now that we have access to Ursoc's Guidance, we are seeing Incarnation have anywhere from a 2 minute cooldown to a sub 90 second cooldown. Because if you're not familiar, Ursoc's Guidance will actually reduce the cooldown of Incarnation based on the amount of rage that we're spending per second. The only thing that I believe has really always hurt Baron Mythic Plus was the lack of multiple defensives. If you look at most tanks, they have an arsenal of defensive options. With the newly reworked tree and Blizzard cleaning up a few of the minor pain points, we can actually still have access to both of our charges of survival instincts along with Barkskin, which, now again with the matted fur talent, now both provide absorbs. We also have a ton of passive mitigation through Rage Expending, Iron First Axe, Scintillating Moonlight on GG procs, and Earth Warden for auto attack damage in higher keys. And while it's not, actually, it's horrible having to spend 4 to 5 points for Berserk talents, Incarnation now being a more dynamically flexible cooldown is really great for the gameplay flow. Also, on top of all of this, Rage of the Sleeper is great. It's a 25% damage reduction that also reflects nature damage back at the attacker. So, it's not a ton of damage, but having an optional unused button is really, really good. Dude, this script is so long. I, I don't... Okay, I'm gonna have to cut this short because I really don't want this to be an 8-year video. I'm trying to get this out before Dragonflight, not after. So, I'm gonna actually just cut it here. I can sit here and complain all day about the tree, but I'm not because it's just, I'm, you know, tired. All I'm trying to say is that this tree for Mythic Plus specifically is in a much better spot than it was a few weeks ago. I mean, don't get me wrong, we had almost no flexibility in a gutted toolkit, still. But, like, look here. If we drop Moonfire Talents and we trade them for arguably much worse defensives and damage, it's just going to be a net loss. Also, with Forest Talent options like Fury of Nature and Scintillating Moonlight, it doesn't really make sense for us to play Galactic Guardian build, right? Blood Frenzy and Rage of the Sleeper are just really too good of an addition to the kit to really pass up in Mythic Plus. The tree is rough at best, but at least there's an actual build that can theoretically work. I'm not saying it's meta, I'm not saying it's perfect, but you can't say that it isn't in a better spot than it was before. Per usual, I'd love to hear what you guys think down below though. I did a bunch of testing already with Ursox, Red and Tear, and Heart of the Wildfire. Um, I mean, I have a lot to say about it, but I think I would need an entire podcast to rant on. I... Ooh, hey, that might not be a bad idea. Anyways, huge shout out to all my patrons who give their actual dollars and dimes to allow me to create, well, whatever you want to call this. Hopefully you're all staying happy, healthy, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace. Yeah, sure.